What is a computer? Do you know what it used to be? Before I actually say what it is now, it used to be someone's job. So 1930s onwards, you'd actually see lots of people whose day job was to add up numbers and compute. So they'd principally use big old-fashioned electromechanical devices to ring through and do things. So there'd be a little bit of mechanism in it, but so often it'd just be their brains. Computers currently are generally systems which will run an algorithm, um, take some inputs, process things, and generate an output. So they have some sense of manipulating what we call state information. They will change values of things. Spotting a computer used to be kind of easy, right? So if you think of the Michael Caine film, The Billion Dollar Brain, right? So, you, you know, the, spotting the computer was easy, filled a room, lots of flashing lights. Nowadays, though, that's getting much harder to see what a computer is. So, so the same process of computation happens, of taking things, running an algorithm, generating an output, but they're much more embedded in the world that surrounds us. So, um, so I often ask people, how many computers do you think you see in a day, right? So if I asked you that question... Without thinking about it, I'm saying 10, oh, 20, okay. if, depending on what I'm doing that day. I actually think the answer to that question is you probably don't know, right? So, so how many CCTV cameras did you drive by? Okay, how many sensors or doors did you open? Um, it's, these things are so invisible, we're not noticing them. So what becomes a computer and we think of a computer is, is really quite hard. So I can open my wallet and give you a picture of my children, which has a computer built into it. So credit cards are great. The pin and chip is exactly computation. So there's an algorithm that runs stored in the chip on the computer that's embedded in this credit card. And so when this is pushed into a machine, you type in some numbers it runs an algorithm through those numbers and verifies that this is indeed the personal identification number that's on this chip. The computing's happening on, on this device. So that's a, one example of a, of a kind of compute computer. Most keys for most cars now have, um, rec have systems which recognise and run a similar sort of code to check that the key is indeed the key associated with this car. The car itself, well, yeah, we'll have, you know, I think you're, you're thinking about 10, your 10 computers, you could all probably count for most of those in your car, okay? So your brakes, for example, your ABS system will have a little computer that will be running and measuring whether your you've got the brakes on and whether they're appropriately applied and then continually running to do that and that will be talking to a whole host of other computers. Your engine management system will be making decisions as to when to fire things and doing all, all that. Not All of this kind of seamlessly kind of happens around you and, and so that all of that kind of embedded computation is a big part of the, the world that surrounds us. Is this what people like you think of as computers? When you say the word computer to your colleagues, you're thinking about all that stuff? So. So, so the kind of computing I do per, is, is, is definitely, that's what I mean by computers. I mean, lots of modern computing is just about that. Um, so you will hear, for example, many of my colleagues talk about future smart cities where decisions are made um, about how the city runs by, by computers that monitor and respond to things and look at these things. You colleagues that have put large computer systems into run complex organisations like Heathrow or Heathrow Terminal 5 um, or the Channel Tunnel and thinking about the signals and signals, those to us are computers, right? There are as much computers as the ones that you directly interact and that indirect interaction is increasingly becoming a part of how we think of the world. Right? So you will hear a lot of people talk about big data um, and how big data will change the world. Okay. One of the, and there are many powerful ways in which they're done. Often though, what, what they do is they take the information from lots of these little computers and then put it all together and then use that to make judgments. A system that is run in Boston um, runs on smartphones and it uses the accelerometer on your smartphone. It can identify when you're driving and when you're walking. But better than that, by measuring everybody's accelerometers that are there, it's been able to draw maps 
of the potholes in the Boston area and schedule the repairs for those potholes. So every time someone drives over one and gets that jump, they know where it happened. Right? And if 15 people do that jump, they can tell where it is, and depending on how big the jump is, the state of the pole, and they can spot its degradation, right? So that kind of mass information from all these computers that we live with becomes really important. One minute you tell me a story about yep. data that scares the life out of me, then yep. you tell me something like so, that, and it makes me think that's brilliant. So, the, well, so the, the challenge obviously here is how to reap the benefits and avoid the pitfalls. So how to, how to do that, but then not make it something that threatens civil liberty, okay, or something that is scary. So, so that's the challenge for us as researchers, is, is, how to, is how to do those things. Obviously the definition of a computer is something that does computation. Yes. What is computation? Like you talk about algorithms and, That's a good. and data states. I want to know where the line in the sand is between something that is computing and something that is not. It's just a piece of electrical equipment. Perhaps the best way to kind of describe the difference is to give you two cards. Okay? So this is one, cre one card, which is a credit card, and this is my university card. Okay? Both of these have electronics in them. Okay? So this is what's called a RFID, Radio Frequency ID. What this has in here is a little chip and a big aerial. So whenever this gets put up against a sensor, a door reader, the coil is energised and it sends the number. So the door knows that number and then the door can decide to open. No decisions are being made by this chip and it's not taking any input. So that doesn't feel like it's doing any computing for me. This takes inputs and it then makes a decision, it does something. And the doing of something here is looking at those numbers and checking that those are the correct numbers through a process of encryption, okay? So generally speaking, when we talk about computers, the general model that we have in our head is input, process, and output. And that processing can do can be very trivial, it can be 2 plus 2 equals 4, that's compute. Or it can be these are the signals for turning the brake on, the speed, the weather conditions, decide how much brake power to put on. So the computing is that process whereby you take those inputs and make a decision. The rules by which you do that, we often talk about as algorithms. So we hardly ever talk about computers, right? So, because what we talk about is the things computers do. And it's how 80 megabytes, do. and let me say again, 80 megabytes, not 80 gigabytes.